I remember one time when I used to work at a real estate management firm. Um, I I made a mistake uh, in in my job. I don't even remember what the mistake was. It probably was so little and minuscule. But I just remember feeling a sense of fear that I was going to lose my job. It was an error that I made, and I thought, you know what, this is it. This is I'm going to lose my job over this. And I remember where exactly where I was. I was in a copy room. And I was just standing there. I was just thinking about the mistake that I made. I was thinking about what am I going to do. I felt an uncomfortable, dreadful feeling come upon me. My, the outlook that I had wasn't good. I saw myself being fired. And I heard the words in my spirit. The feeling that you're having right now is not coming from me. Man, that set me free. I heard it. Just, that, just as clear as I'm, as I'm telling you right now, the feeling that you are having right now is not coming from me. And I knew that that was the Lord speaking to me. And He was assuring me that you fear, or you're, you're feeling this feeling of fear. You're feeling anxious. You're feeling a dreadful feeling. But I want you to know, because I don't give the spirit of fear, because I have not given you that, that feeling that you're having is not coming from me. And so I want to let you know, what feelings do you have? If you have that feeling of anxiety, that feeling that things are not going to work out, things are going to turn out bad, things are going to be dreadful, things are not going to work out in your favor, if you're anxious, if you're worried, if you're staying up at night thinking about how you're going to make this happen, God is telling you right now, the feeling that you have right now is not coming from Him. Why? Because God is not the God of fear. He has not given you that spirit, but He's given you the spirit of love of power and of a sound mind. That's the important thing about keeping yourself from fear. You know, the interesting thing about that verse, 2 Timothy 1.7, where the Bible says that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. If you look at the preceding verse, verse 6, Paul is speaking to Timothy and he says, Therefore I say, stir up the gift that is in you through the laying on of my hands. And then in verse 7, he says, for God has not given you the spirit of fear. You know what I see from that? That oftentimes people are afraid of stirring up the gifts inside of them because they are afraid of shining. Are you afraid of shining? Are you afraid of being in the spotlight? Are you afraid of taking on the responsibility of leading people? Are you afraid of those things? Some people don't want that attention. You know, the first king of Israel was King Saul. And he was afraid of that. He felt that he could not be a king. He felt that he wasn't suitable. And so when God called him to be king or when the people elected him, it wasn't God's perfect will, but God allowed it to happen. He was hiding among the stuff, the Bible says. He was afraid. He had the ability to, but he was afraid to take his position. And oftentimes, people are afraid to take their position. Are you afraid? of stirring up the gift inside of you. And I'm going to tell you, God has placed something inside of you. God has placed the gift inside of you. I'll give you an example. Take, take two glasses of water. Take, say I had one glass on my left, one glass on my right. And I put lemonade. I put, I, I put lemon juice in both the, the glasses. And I put sugar in both the glasses. But I decided to stir up the one on my right and I didn't stir up the one on my left. Which one would you rather drink? I bet you you would say the one on my right. Why? Because if I stir up the one on the right, it has more flavor. The sugar is not to the bottom. The lemonade is not to the bottom. Everything has been stirred. So when you drink it, you have a better taste. You enjoy the drink more. And that's the difference between many of Christ many that's the difference between many Christians. One Christian may have their gifts stirred up and the other may not. And so one appears to be advancing, the other may not. And then some people feel, well, you know, God, God seems to be partial because he's blessing this person and, and, and yet I'm not being blessed. Or this person is advancing and that, that person is not being advanced. Why? Well, oftentimes the person that is advancing in life is the person that took the time to stir up the gift on the inside of them. But I'm going to tell you, to stir up the gift on the inside of you, you have to be fearless. Why? Because everyone knows that if they stir up the gift inside of them, it's going to push them in the limelight. Doesn't mean that you have to be on television. Doesn't mean that you have to be on the radio. But it means that wherever God has placed you, you're going to shine. You could be an accountant. 
You could be a doctor. You could be an actor. You could be a you could be a, a rapper. You whatever you are, whatever area God has called you to, you know if you stir up that gift, if you're diligent, if you're working at it, if you're pushing yourself in that area, that gift will be stirred up and you become more flavorful, just like that that lemon juice that was stirred up. It's more flavorful than the one that wasn't stirred up. When you stir up the gift, you become more flavorful and people want to listen to you. People want to hear you. They want to follow your leadership. They want to know what you have to say. But just like again, verse 7 says, For God has not given you the spirit of fear. In order for you to do that, you have to know that God has not given you the spirit of fear. You see, Paul had to tell this to Timothy. Timothy was a young person. He was a young pastor, single man. And I'm sure there were older people in his church, people who knew perhaps the scriptures more than he did. Maybe they were a little bit more learned. Maybe they were more advanced in some areas. And he told, Paul told Timothy, listen, don't, just, don't allow people to despise your youth. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. I know people personally, they have an ability, they have a gift, but they are afraid of stirring it up because they are afraid that if they stir it up, then they will be pushed to the limelight and then they will have the responsibility of maintaining a level of success. It seems odd, but it's true. Some people are afraid of success. We know a lot of people are afraid of failure, but some people are also afraid of success. Why? Because if they succeed, they feel an awesome responsibility to maintain the level of success. No one wants to hear of someone who was successful and then they became unsuccessful. So people oftentimes are afraid of being successful and then failing and then being unsuccessful. Don't, don't be afraid of those things. Why? For God has not given you the spirit of fear. If ever you have those feelings, I want you to know very simply, it's not coming from God. That's just a basic understanding of what fear is. One last thing I'll share with you is that fear not only paralyzes you, maybe you, you, you heard that you know, fear causes you to be immobile, it causes you to be paralyzed, but fear does something else. It also causes you to sink. It's one thing to be standing still, and it's another thing to be going under. And I think about Peter. When Peter was walking on water to meet Jesus, the Bible says that he became afraid and he began to look at the winds and the waves. And the Bible shows that Peter began to sink. He began to sink. Why? Because he was afraid. Fear will not only immobilize you, it will cause you to sink. It will cause you to go down under. There are people right now that are dying on the inside. Dying. They're, they have a lack of joy, a lack of fulfillment. They have a lack of, of, of freshness. They need to be refreshed. They feel stale. They feel brittle. Why? If they look in their heart, they'll find a trace of fear. Somewhere, somehow, they chose not to act on what God put in their heart because they thought that they would fail. They thought they couldn't succeed. They thought that it would not work. They thought that that relationship would not last. And so they held out on it. I know people today, it's amazing to think, people that are in there, the people that are middle aged, not married simply because of fear. Remember, Jesus told the disciples, he said, Satan does not come but to steal, kill, and destroy. And the way he does it is that he gives you thought impartations. He tells you, you're not going to make it. It's not going to work out. It can't happen. You embrace those feelings. You embrace those thoughts. And then what happens is you do not move forward. And then 20 years go by, and then you're in the same place that you were 20 years ago and you're not enjoying your life and if you trace it back you'll say hmm maybe there was an area in my life that I was not full of faith but I was full of fear I'm telling you today you can be full of faith you can be fearless part two of this message will be coming up shortly and I want you to tune in for it because I'm going to be sharing some things about how to overcome the spirit of fear that was just a basic understanding of what fear is Stay tuned for part two. God bless you.